welcome to today's Just Talking Podcast. And today with David and myself, we have Adam Leader. And Adam Leader is in a band called In Search of Sun. And what a great band they are too. I was just checking out this stuff at Download. I was watching a Download video earlier. Amazing. I love stuff that's going on. You know, you've got a lot going on and it's like entertaining. Oh. Thank you, thank you very much, man. Thank you. It's a uh, it's a pleasure to be on here, and thank you for having me. It's always nice to to be able to have an opportunity to talk about the things you like doing because uh, it's hard enough doing the things you like doing with with, <laughs> with life getting in the way and stuff. So yeah, it's nice to come on in and take some time to talk about it. So thank you guys. Thank you. That's cool, man. Yeah, it's our pleasure, really. You know, we we do it as fans. So. Uh... We're always uh, interested in meeting new people, discovering new music, and uh, yeah, and you're a bit more interesting than uh, a regular musician guests, I guess. <laughs> really? Well, I would think so. I mean, you've got a couple yeah. of different avenues to go down, so which David's going to talk to you about. Yeah, well, obviously you've got the movie side of it as well, so I'm, I'm really intrigued by that because we've, we've probably interviewed maybe one or two actors. Um, but we've not actually interviewed anybody that's written a movie or directed or edited or produced the movie so i'm just kind of like really interested on how you've got into that you know whether did you do anything in college that led you into it or is it something you just kind of like picked up and had a go at well <laughs> apart from drop out of college after a couple of days of being there um it's, it's funny man it's kind of i don't know I, ironic uh, if that's the word i i i was in and out of well i was in a band all through school <clears throat> uh, high school that's what i wanted to do and uh so in school i was playing music and stuff and writing and covering songs with with the guys in my old band there and then after school i had this video camera <clears throat> that my parents kindly got me and i got to make all these ridiculous horror films that were also funny uh with my friends at night and then the next day we'd have everyone back at my house at lunchtime uh to to premiere these ridiculous films oh, okay. made and it was it was something that I always wanted to to do. I, both music and film are uh, uh, I'm equally as passionate about both. And after school finished, I literally went to college for I think it was three days, and I just gave up. And and because I thought I, I just want to play music, man. I just want to play music, and then hopefully make films at some point. So I, I left college and just joined loads of different bands, and I guess prioritized the music side of things first um hence eventually i guess in search of some was born um after spending a long time trying to get the band together and then um it was on our first so our first album the world is yours which god yeah that came out eight years ago man 2014 it, it, the first video we were sh we were shooting for that um we hired a guy called richard oaks uh from a, a, a film production uh, company called Dark Fable Media. And that's where I met him. He came to shoot our first music video for, for the first single we, we were releasing off, off that debut album. And me and him hit it off. We got, well, actually, at first we thought we hated one another. Right? <laughs> I thought he hated me. He thought I hated him. Um, and then he went off. He, he edited the video. He sent it to us. We were really happy. And, and that was that. But then he wanted to make a short film um, and he was looking for... I guess actors to 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 play the parts in this short film he wanted to do, and I said to him, "Dude, I've always wanted to play a villain. So can I can I uh, can I have the part?" So he auditioned me. He somewhere down the line, he you know he somehow liked my audition <laughs> and uh, got me in the film. And basically, we we just hit it off and became really good friends after that. And discovered that both of us really really wanted to make our own movies. Mm. Um, and yeah, I guess fast forward a bit and and we decided after a long time of, of figuring out you know how do you how do you even make a film how do you you know you look, you look at all the films that we all love which cost millions and millions to make most of them and you're like how do how do you do that how do you get to that that level of uh trust and talent or whatever the word is for someone to go here you go here's 20 million go and make a film mm -hmm. we realized that with anything, whatever it is, if it's creative or whether it's film or music or if it's 
the regular jobs that most people have doesn't matter what it is you have to start at the bottom and work your way up so we thought screw trying to find investors uh for the film because we haven't got a track record so why would they why would they trust us uh with their money rightly so so we thought let's raise the money ourselves so we spent a whole year building the dark fable media youtube channel which kind of taught people in a really ridiculous way because we don't take ourselves very seriously how to film or, or make movies on a, on a very low budget uh and we managed to garner this you know albeit small but really dedicated following of people that tuned in to our episodes every friday and, and loved what we did um and after building after after spending a year of building it we decided to use that platform to try and fund our first feature film which was something i went away and, and wrote the script for uh and once that script was done that's when we decided right let's let's do this fundraising thing so we sort of spent uh we planned this like live stream event where all our subscribers it was basically a, a 12 hour live stream it was from 6 p.m till 6 a.m the following uh morning where we would just do stupid can i swear on this yeah yeah of course you can you we would be doing <laughs> the most stupid fucked up shit like just you know for people to, to to donate you know rich had to he shaved his eyebrows and stuff okay. for, for someone like pledged 100 pounds and people were paying uh or auction we were like auctioning off uh certain props from some of the short stupid short films that we'd made on the on the youtube channel and over that night we'd managed to raise i think it was just under two grand um of a twenty-five thousand pound target in order for us to make this this first film um so that was kind of like our our it, that kick-started us into it and the rest we basically offered our subscribers a chance to be the investors for the film so the same way you would get an investor to put 25 grand or 25 million into your film in return for x percentage of the, the uh the equity of the film we just did that to our investor uh, to, to the subscribers and said if you give us two grand this is how much you get if you give us four grand or if you give us one thousand whatever and we managed to raise the the whole the whole amount of money and we went away and made the film and god yeah then we've just made our second film as well we just finished so um what did you think i guess that's the story in short yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> so, cool. the, so the first film then was that's hosts that's the, Hosts, yeah. And it like came out in 2020, and you because know, I was, I've been looking around to see where I can find it to watch it, and that one's on Amazon Prime, isn't it? So you can um, rent it on Amazon Prime or pay for it or whatever you want to do. There, did you did you release it on DVD as well, or was it um, just electronic? Yeah, electronically released. Uh, at the moment, in I know in the UK, it's just on Amazon Prime and Shudder. And I think it's on Sky Store as well, but there's no. Okay. But I, we we know that the distributor at the moment is uh, hasn't basically gone down the route of, of physical DVDs yet or anything. It's something Jody we. Jodie Foster in it? hosts. Huh? One Jodie Foster in hosts. Jodie Foster. Huh. Did you get well, it for twenty five grand? I wish I'd get Jodie Foster. <laughs> <laughs> that That'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, no DVD, no DVDs yet. It's just uh, digital streaming platforms okay. over here in, in the states and a couple of other countries as well. So that's kind of ticking along nicely. Um, mm. And yeah, last year we just decided. You know, I, I had this idea that, and I won't spoil it because we've just finished the film and it, it's not <laughs> out yet. But I had this idea. That I really wanted to write a film based on based on the story of this i think it was in austria or somewhere in in europe of the guy that willingly gave himself up to be eaten by a cannibal oh yeah yeah, yeah. i remember that yeah i always wanted to that, that I, i've always had that the inspiration to write a film based on that and that's kind of oh. kind of what i've done <laughs> so wrote the script and and we we managed to to find investment again to 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 go and make that film which we did and we wrapped in december of last year and we've just finished editing the film now actually so okay. Yeah, we'll see what happens with that. So that's exciting. I thought you were gonna, thought you were gonna say you always had the inspiration to be eaten by like somebody. Then. <laughs> I'm the cannibal, man. No, I, I eat. Yeah. I'm not gonna ask you what you eat. You might have different preferences to me. <laughs> so that's um, that's Boring BT stuff. then, yeah. Oh, okay. 
So that, that and that second film is Feed Me, is it? That is Feed Me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And then you've got another one because I've been on IMDb, which is like my favorite go-to. You got one on there called Dirge as well. Is that a short movie or something that's going to be coming out? Actually, you know what? I don't think we're doing that anymore. To be honest, that was okay. that was like the first the first project that we we'd written that together before we even wrote hosts um and that was kind of the inspiration or, or i don't know call it the uh, our training session into the world of film where we, we had this idea and wrote this story and um rich went away and made the artwork for that and stuff and the poster and we thought yes let's go and make this film but then whatever happened in between that, that sort of steered us away from dirge which was it is it is the type of film that that can't be made for twenty five grand. It needs mm. it's a film that that needs upwards of half a million to kind of do. So we thought that has to go on the back burner. We have to start from the bottom and work our way up. But then after hosts and after I'd written the script for Feed Me, we kind of realised Dirge is, probably won't ever see the light of day. To be honest, because it's mm. it's or if it did, we'd certainly have to go back in there and and rewrite the story because it's. It's yeah, it, it's the first thing we did. So I guess to yeah. put it simply, it's not very strong now. Looking back at it, um, but you learn from these things, man. Because at the time, you think, oh, this is great, this is great. But then when you go back and look, it, it's kind of like, no, this, this is not so great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, Have you yeah. ever pitched a movie to anyone then? Because like you said, you were looking for, you were thinking about looking for investors, you know, on a big budget. Have you ever actually gone and pitched a movie? We there were a couple of um, investors or, or I guess wealthy individuals that we did approach uh, back in the the host days uh, when we were trying to make that, but I guess we all kind of, we got the same the, the same kind of response back, um, which which was completely fair enough. And that response was, look, we we know that you're good at what you do and stuff or whatever. We like what you do. We've seen what you're capable of, but without anything to prove it and most importantly without a proper business plan which mm. we didn't have they were like you kind of need to go and do your homework first and come back mm. to us with some proper numbers and we would rather come back and invest in something once we've we've seen that you're that you've proven you can make a film and make its money back um which is what which is exactly what we went away and did um and that's kind of why feed me was somewhat easy is the wrong word but easier to to find actual investment for um and there was a brief a brief time where i did pitch it to a couple of studios um but it, it, actually no sorry another film sorry so the third film after feed me which is which has been written that's not on imdb yet that has been pitched to a couple of studios but again it's early days and i think I feel like it's always, I could be wrong here, I might be laughed at, but I feel like it's always better to try and not sign the idea over to a studio. Yeah. Because yeah. you, you lose all that control over it and, and stuff and you might get a, a worse deal in the, in the in the back end or whatever. I think it's better yeah. to, if you can, find the investment via whoever you have to do it, make it and then sell it to a distributor or a studio or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah, cool. Oh, I get that. That's cool. Is that you, Dave? No, it's uh, the dog. I know it's the fucking dog. <laughs> fucking hell. Well, it's not Stop me barking. then, is it? Stop barking, Dave. <laughs> I don't bark. <laughs> oh, I was going to ask you something. Oh, yeah, because I read somewhere a, a long time ago that to pitch a movie to a studio or whatever, you had to be able to write it in something like four lines. The whole concept of the movie had to be described in four lines. Yeah, there's like a... Um... Yeah, I mean, even less to be honest. If you if you if you get the opportunity to speak with someone at I don't know uh, Paramount or Blumhouse or whatever, and and they say, oh yeah, okay, cool. What's your film about? You have to sell it to them there and then. Like you have to have a um, what's it? It's not a synopsis. Well, I guess it is a synopsis, but literally like a one liner or a two liner that says your entire film. It, it sums it up from start to finish. That makes them go. Oh, I like that. Okay, and then they'll say, "Send me the script, and, and we'll have a look through it." Um, okay. but yeah, that's super important. But even for 
general audiences around the world. You know, when you, I guess, back in the days of going to rent films or DVDs or whatever, you'd look at the back and you'd, uh, alongside the, the pictures, you, you'd read what it's about. And that yeah. that's that's the whole, that's the sellability. And it's the same on Netflix nowadays, where you look at it and you see the text, the little blurb, the yeah. blurb, that's what I'm thinking of, the yeah. blurb about the film. Yeah. And you've, you've got to be able to sell it quickly yeah. with that, so... Yeah. The pictures. If there's, if there's, if there's boobs <laughs> on the right. pictures, mine that helps as well, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. that's for you, you fucking pervert. <laughs> <laughs> pictures, a strong trailer, and uh, a solid blurb for the, I guess, for the very few people that yeah. <laughs> actually read it. Yeah. <laughs> Have you? Did you? Did you do a trailer for Hopes? Then is that is that available somewhere to see? Because yeah. I'm, I'm going to go on. Um, Amazon Prime and, and buy it. I gotta be honest, so I can have a watch of it because my my buddy um, messaged me the other day and um, was saying about the film, and he said it's really good, man. So uh, I'm gonna oh. check it out and have a watch of it. Thank you, man. Thank you. Um, yeah, there is a trailer. Um, yeah, I'll send it over in. I'll send it. I'll reply in this email and I'll send you the link. Okay, cool. Thank you. Oh, is it a long movie or a short movie? It's a long film. It's about ninety minutes, or just oh, right, okay. uh, just under just under ninety minutes. Mm. Uh, and this new one, Feed Me, is, I think, na oh, well, <laughs> the first edit we did. Um, so we finished we finished the first pass of the edit in ja at the end of January, I think it was, this year. And the first pass of the film was coming in. At, it came in at two hours and 16 minutes. And we were like, fuck that. We have to, <laughs> we have to shorten this down. Because the sweet spot for a film generally is an hour and a half yeah. um and somehow like just going through it like constantly like start to finish start to finish taking stuff out changing things we've managed to get it down to an hour and 37 minutes which um yeah i'm super proud of that actually because that took a lot of a lot of time and effort to do but um yeah okay yeah, yeah. It takes me forever to edit a fucking podcast <laughs> it's a tough game isn't it man people don't realize that that whether you're editing audio or audio and video, it's long, man. It's tedious. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I only put stuff in. I don't take stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like on this format, I'm all I'm doing is throwing stuff on the screen, really, and and just like researching it and finding it and then pasting it in, and it's fucking it's fucking nightmare. But yeah. we do the radio show as well, and that's all audio. So I have to we record our audio. And then I paste it into the radio show, you know, in between the songs. And I have to cut that up and everything, and that takes fucking forever as well. It's like, my, I mean, our first radio episode, I think it took me like half hour or something. And mm. it was pretty botchy, you know. But now uh, now we're on like, how, how far are we in, Dave? Three months into our radio? Yeah, I think we've done maybe 14 episodes now, maybe. 40 nice. months, perhaps, yeah. And yeah. now it's fucking, takes me like seven hours. <laughs> <So then. Yeah. laughs> Because I'm but, really into the detail now, you know. But that's that's the cool part of it. You kind of pick up these little thing from from when you start. You pick up all these little t uh, habits or tendencies, or you notice certain things as the more you do it, and imp and improve the way you do things over time and stuff. And you can see like when you compare something three months down the line to something three months ago, you yeah, can you, yeah. you can hear or see that 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 difference in quality and stuff. And it's it's always cool looking back and being able to to compare your work and see how how much how much you've improved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's cool. We've gone, back, we've gone backwards. <laughs> well, we haven't. <laughs> Some people do. Some people do. <laughs> if, you, if you look at our first podcast, I mean, I look like I was sitting in a fucking mortuary. <laughs> yeah. Were yeah, you my, sitting in a mortuary? My, my, no, beard I was still in my basement. Well. Like <laughs> the what? My beard looked rough as hell on the first couple. I did look like <laughs> yeah, a bow was fucking down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> didn't even yeah. fit in the screen. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you yeah, have a long beard it's... before. You have a really big beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah, like, I was, was watching last, last week. I was. Yeah, I only, I only just cut it up, cut it short. To be honest, and this is short. <laughs> yeah, you looked like a member of ZZ Top last week. <laughs> That's impressive, actually. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> yes, I, I had to cut it, man. He was just fucking doing my head in. I've cut it a few times, actually, since we've had this podcast, because if you look, if you go back and look at the early podcast, it was like down here. <laughs> and out here, and then it's like, 
It's got shorter and shorter and shorter, and now we're at this. How long does that take to grow? Like a, a beard, like the beard you have. How long is that? Is that years? Is that months? No, I'm, my hair grows really, really fast. Really? Yeah. I mean, I cut it last week, and it was like about oh, two weeks ago. Was it, Dave? Mm. I cut my, I cut it, and it was a, it was probably about that short. Wow. And it's grown that much in two weeks, I guess. That's it. Just grows like fuck. That's so cool. That's a good problem to have, in my opinion. I don't know. <laughs> you, want to, you want to see the state on his bollocks? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got to cut them every day. Not my bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> but I got a good idea for a movie, and it's a horror movie as well. Oh, you're going to pitch it, maybe? I'm pitch it. I, I love pitching <laughs> stuff for people. <laughs> yeah, that's why he was asking you, Adam, about pitching. He wants, the, he wants you to be the pitchy. He's already fucking writing it down. <laughs> Hairy bollocks. <laughs> Done. Let's make it. Let's make it. No, but I can, sometimes I come up with these ideas and I think, oh, that would be a good movie, you know. And um, I had this idea for a horror movie because where I used to live in my old house, it's like where the water meter is under the floor. <laughs> like my girlfriend's fucking moaning now. <laughs> can you hear that? <laughs> There's like um, a, 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 an under the house floor space, if you like. It's not very deep. It's only like, oh, okay, you can't see my table. It's about table high, if you like. It's a crawl space more than anything, you know. Mm. And I thought, because you've got like a row of like t 10 houses and they've all got this crawl space underneath, what if you had some sort of creature living underneath there and it was coming out and coming up through the, the, the water, uh, where well, your water meter is, through the hatch, if you like. And like snatching little animals, like dogs and cats and stuff. But then it eventually progresses onto children and old people. Well, there you go. You got yourself a film. You got a creature feature right there. Yeah, yeah. what a great movie. <laughs> and I was only going to call it the postcode. the postcode. So it wouldn't be like called something something. It would just be called like the postcode of the address. That's a cool idea, man. Oh, thank you, mate. I'd see that's coming from a filmmaker. That's fucking brilliant. Right. He's going to be anything. contacting Jodie Foster on uh, on Instagram and I know to see if she wants to star in it. I haven't got 25 grand to fucking pay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, yeah, you know, sometimes you have these mad ideas. And, mm. uh, I just thought, yeah, that might be a good idea. Yeah. But, uh, anyway, go back. let's go back to your band for a bit. In search of the, you said you made your first album when? First album... Yeah, first full length album was in <clears throat> came out in 2014. So we, we actually wrote and recorded it in 20 at the end of 2013, I think it was. Um Okay, so it's been going a while then. Yeah, well, yeah. I thought you were quite a new band. It says in your bio you started in 2019, didn't it? Unless it's a typo, that's definitely wrong. <laughs> yeah, no. Um no, we started, oh man, we started in Fuck, it was summer 2010, it was. Um, I was still looking for band members. I couldn't, I could not form this band after, like, after school. I spent so long trying to find people. And Dave, one of our guitar players, I used to, I knew him because my old band in school played with his old band in, in, uh, in our local town once. And so we'd kind of, we knew each other on like an acquaintance basis. And He's like, how's the band going? And I said to him, I, dude, I, I'm still trying to find members. And he said, you know, I play guitar, right? And I went, oh, yeah, uh, you do. <laughs> and then he, he takes his phone out, <clears throat> hands it over to me and presses play. And he plays me this, this clip of him just playing guitar and just jamming a bunch of riffs that he'd made up. And I thought, dude, this is great. Let's, let's, <laughs> why didn't I think of this before? Let's jam. So, yeah, summer of 2010, it was me and Dave just, jamming in either my bedroom or his bedroom and then yeah fast forward a bit and we we became a band and played our first ever show on i won't forget it, it was april 15th 2011 so we've been going since then okay <laughs> but that, yeah reading on your boat it says uh follow on from your 2017 album release virgin funk mother yes that was oh. our that's our second that, that was our second album oh, okay uh, yeah, and the world is yours was our first, and then we actually released an EP in 2012, um, but we went by a different name. We actually changed the name to In Search of Sun in 2013. So I guess you could say the band started in 2014, really, where we, mm -hmm. when we released that first album. But technically, yeah, we've been going since 
since 2011, since that first show back in 2011, man. Okay. Long, long long all, the same, all the same band members as well? Besides the drummer? Uh, yes. So, well, at, no, do you know what? Technically, yes. So our drummer, Sean, he was originally in that very first lineup, but then he left for, I guess, for personal reasons at the time and stuff and went away for a bit. And we had another drummer called Hov come in, who was awesome. Killer, still friends with him. He's a, a lovely, lovely, lovely guy and uh, love him to bits. He's <laughs> one of the most ridiculous people I know. He's just got the best sense of humour. Um, but then, yeah, I, I, Hov was in the band for a few years and and it just didn't work out. I mean, it, we were sort of just going in different directions. So we kind of mutually agreed. Uh, well, he he talked to us about the prospect of leaving and we understood and stuff and we figured it wasn't really working anyway. So Hov left and Sean came back, uh, but Sean came back better than ever. He had that time to sort of go away and do whatever it was he needed to do. And he came back and the dude is just on fire. I remember he, uh, he jumped into the deep end, you know, he had, he had to, he had to, he had a few months to, to get up to speed and, and uh, cause we were doing a few dates and stuff. And then it was, it was a matter of months, which, which flies by um that he had to learn everything and i remember going down to the studio with him and going through bits and pieces with him and whatever and he would just he he would not stop the guy is an absolute animal and he's one of the one of the best drummers out there i think he's brilliant is, was he the guy is he the guy in the download video then yeah yeah yeah. yeah yeah he's good man he's he is good yeah he's Oh, but the whole band i mean i was watching that download video and he's he got like it's, it's quite a remarkable visual really I mean, some bands you see, they're quite fucking boring, you know, especially some, I, I, I shouldn't pigeonhole it really, but especially some indie bands, you know, they yeah. can be quite stiff, if you like. But I mean, it you've got this, be. you've got this thing going on where, you, I mean, you all look so different as well. Yeah. You know, you've got that one guy with the massive dreads and you've got you with a bald head. Yeah. You know, it's like, and, and the way you move around with your instruments, or not necessarily you, but your band, it's like, you, you it's, it's fucking... I don't get excited about bands much anymore. You know, I'm 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 an old guy now, like. But I looked at it and I thought, fucking hell, this this grabs me like this. I'm excited by this. Oh, thank you, man. That's really kind of you to say. Yeah, I mean, we 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 can't not move. Like, I I know exactly what you mean about certain bands. It just becomes a bit stale and they sort of yeah. just stand there and there's no energy. But but for us, like, I I don't know what it is. Maybe those bands unless it's an image thing it, 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 i guess most of the time or in my opinion i just see it as they've kind of lost that that drive in them and yeah, that yeah. and it becomes a job whereas i know that I, I and i can speak for the five of us here in the band that we live for that shit man that's that we love it we absolutely we just love it so much so whenever we get up on that stage after months and months and months and months of working on a you know planning a show or rehearsing for a show or doing all the stuff behind the scenes that 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 you have to do when when you when you're taking a band seriously and you want to be treating it like a business all the boring stuff that you have to do getting on that stage like and going ape shit for 30 minutes or 40 minutes is what we live for so we yeah, just yeah. lose there we can't we can't not move uh, yeah. so the energy the energy is always is always there for us and I, I feel like for at our shows it's always been there's always been a connection, like I, I, I feel like with, because we're somewhat of a, we're still somewhat of a new band, in my opinion. We haven't, in the sense of that, we haven't really broke through that barrier of, yeah. I don't know, becoming some international, well-known band yet. And we may never do that, but I've always felt like any shows we played, there's always been a connection between us and the audiences that we play in front of because of that energy. It just like it bounces off each other and. Yeah, I love it, man. That's, yeah, that's what we live for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that looks, like I said, I keep going back to that download video. That's the only live video I've seen of you guys. But it was like, you were all, you've all got your own thing going on. You yeah. know, your guitar player holds up high and he's doing his little trills, if you like. And your bass yeah. player's moving around like crazy. And then you've got this other guy on another guitar going, going in his direction. And then close to the end, and, and the camera, the footage from your drummer is fucking amazing because you've got an overhead camera on him. Yeah. And then um, it's like and you all come together at the end, you know, because you go, I want to see everybody in this fucking room go fucking crazy. And then it's like, 
and it's all all comes together so well. It's like, you know, you're a pretty tight band, I think. Ah, oh, thank you. It's nice nice to hear that because we we do we give ourselves a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you need to. I mean, if you want to get to that level, I mean, you've definitely got the talent. I'll, I'll be honest. Oh, thanks, man. I don't know how to take that, but thank you. It's very. You don't have to cry, but. <laughs> <laughs> No, but you know, I've seen a few bands and I, I like fucked in, fucking fucked around managing a few bands. But you've definitely got some, you've got something, and it, it, it really like excited me to be honest. It's like fucking hell, he's, he's, he's good. Oh, it's thank you very much. Like, fucking hell, he's, he's, this band's good. But going on to your new single, your new single's called The Fight I Play With. Mm. When is that being released? Um, well, it's actually coming out tomorrow, the 17th of March. Okay. But I don't know, depending on when this podcast comes out. It's out now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll be out now. <laughs> well, I was only asking, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm fuck my fault, because I'm going to play it on the radio next week. Oh, nice. I wasn't sure if you'd like put it out yet or if, you know. Yeah, but no, I'll yeah. Definitely, I'll definitely whack it on the radio show next week. Yeah, no, it, well, yeah, in that case, for, for yeah, for the listeners, then yeah, it's, it's out now. The song is out now, and yeah, it came out on Thursday, the 17th of March. Uh, okay. Yeah. Check the video out on YouTube as well and stream it on Spotify, all that cool shit. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen the video yet. I've only uh, listened to the what have you sent me. But um, where did you get your inspiration from then? Musically, lyrically? Yeah, musically, yeah. Uh, well, both really, because it's both of it. Well, I, I guess musically, I, it, it's an interesting one. It's, it, it's an amalgamation of, I guess... I guess always being deep rooted in metal. We all grew up listening to metal and, and rock music and stuff, but at the same time, we're all interestingly, like extremely open to other genres. We love it. Like we're all into to metal rock, uh, hip hop, uh, R and B pop. Like there's like we funk, like there's so much stuff that we all love. And obviously that stems out into all these different sorts of bands that just cross mm -hmm. genres and stuff. So whenever we, write music i guess the, the inspiration we've always had this thing of just writing whatever we feel like we want to write and and stuff and we're not trying to necessarily maybe more so back in the day when we when we were doing heavier stuff and we were sort of we didn't understand our sound or, or what in search of sun should sound like and it was more i guess heavier or, or metal focused back then but yeah as we've grown we've just sort of brought all these ideas to the table which usually starts from a little trill idea from Dave, the guy that holds yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost every time it starts from a, a, a random idea like that and we'll go, oh, cool, let's, it, it, we'll just throw loads of things at it. And if it sounds, if it sounds heavy, cool, it sounds heavy. If it sounds poppy, it sounds poppy. We'll just go with that. We're not trying to cater for any kind of, for a specific uh, demographic, if you will. We just write whatever we write and, and yeah, we've sort of come this far with it and, these new batch of songs, including the fire I play with, they're they're all very, they're very interesting. They're very sort of, they've got a lot of pop elements to it, which yeah, yeah, yeah. came out in the in the writing in the writing process uh, in uh, twenty twenty one. Well, for me to describe it, I mean, it was like, how can how can I figure this out? You know, I was listening to it and I was thinking, where do they just, where do the influences come from? And I've written them. <laughs> you might laugh, but I because your vocals are quite light as well in it. In some parts, so I've written down Savage Garden meets <laughs> Tears for Fears meets Asking Alexandria. That, I mean, that's cool. I'll take that. That I mean, I'll that's take quite that. a yeah. And then a bit of like We Came's Romans thrown over the top of it, and then yeah, it's like uh, you know, it's like it's like I just listened to it. And I was like, fucking, that's really good. <laughs> I really like it. Oh, I'm glad you like it, man. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's weird. Like you know, if you listen to our older stuff, it's definitely. Definitely, um, I, I certainly took a heavier approach to the vocals, but I think that was just because of what I grew up on and what I thought, um, I guess, was expected of, of, or my own expectation of, if I was a vocalist in a band, this is what should come out. So, it, you know what I mean? So I guess back then it was because I didn't quite know the direction we were going or who, what In Search of Some was as a musical entity. I sort of just went straight to my main uh influences that i grew up on which it, to be honest like the, the, my favorite band in the whole world is pantera okay so, anselmo ben anselmo he's my 
he's my idol, man. Like, you know, that, that dude, his voice is just ridiculous, ridiculous, man. So I took a lot of inspiration from him, but then eventually I, I started tapping into other stuff like Incubus. They would probably be my other favorite band as well nowadays. And, but the, the vocal styles are completely different. And obviously yeah. Brandon Boyd sings, he sings a, a hell of a lot more. He's got a lighter voice in places, but he also, he, he I, more so in the older stuff, he screams a lot more as well. And I thought, oh, okay, this is cool. Like cross singing, yeah, cross away, screaming yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. So it's just a mishmash of all sorts of shit, basically. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what it is. <laughs> Yeah. that's always the i think that's the best way to be honest don't pigeonhole yourself you know yeah exactly uh someone called us pop metal um or, or a few people have, have tried to define it as pop metal which fine cool <laughs> you know it is what it is yeah. yeah yeah there seems to be a lot more like electronic rock bands coming out at the moment it's been for like a couple of years already but there seems to be a few more sort of like breaking through the scene, uh, if you like, or the, uh, not necessarily breaking through, but being more noticed. Mm. Yeah. 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 It'd be interesting to see what happens. Cause we've, we've got, as I say, like five more songs. Um, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this, but screw it. We've got five more songs. We're going to be your band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that we're going to be releasing strategically over the whole of 2022 whilst we're writing a whole new bunch of material for 2023 so it'll be interesting to see what what happens with you know that how well the fire i play with does and and the other five songs that are coming out this year and it, just to see that kind of growth with with this particular type of of uh or where we're at in our sound at the moment uh in yeah. respect of these songs we just we'll see where it goes it's exciting man it's cool and it's it's nice to be it's nice. It's nice to be to be getting active again. Obviously, after a, after a somewhat tough couple of years for, yeah. for everybody, you know. So, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It's exciting. Cool. What, what gigs we've got coming up? Got any gigs coming up? At the moment, nothing. We're literally okay. in the process of now that we've kind of got this whole release plan done for 2022, which took some time to plan and and, and do everything. Basically, we're now at the stage where we're looking at getting another agent and yeah just, just looking to get on bills and do some shows possibly a headline tour towards the end of the year dependent on how uh how big of a response we get from this you know how, these songs over the year and we'll, we'll see but there's some stuff in the pipeline we've been put forward for already um but nothing is as of this moment in time nothing is is booked yet it's, it's in the plan it, it yeah. is it's the plan, the plan. okay yeah. how did you cool. get on download then did you have an agent then? Did you have a management or? Um, it was offered to us. Um, God, I can't remember how we got that. I think some uh, one of the, the bookers at Download got wind of us via someone uh, close to us that was in the industry okay. um, who recommended them and who recommended us to them. And they said, yes, get them on the bill, which... I think I I think yeah, give or take. That's kind of how download happened, um, and then it was from that performance actually that we sparked interest in the label that uh, did eventually go on to sign us, um, and that's the label we released uh, the second album, Virgin Funk Mother, from. Uh, but then since then we've come away from the label, and now we're doing things independently, which is okay. I think I think is great. To be honest, I wouldn't I wouldn't want it any other way. I think it's yeah much better doing things that way it's maybe a little bit more difficult in terms of financial backing and and whatever but i think uh for any actually for, for any bands or artists listening now i think if you can keep it independent for as long as you can then do it because yeah, uh, yeah. well to be honest a lot of labels are only offering distribution nowadays aren't they yeah you know you yeah. got to turn up with a band you got to turn up with an actual product if you like you know i've got a cd and then they say oh well would you like us to distribute it for you? Mm. And that's about as far as they go, you know? I mean, there's, there's so much, I'd say there's so, <laughs> there's so much money not being made, if you like. You yeah, know? totally. It's a, it's a tough one because a label, like I'm, I'm sure you guys and, and anyone really knows that there's not really much money to be made from 
well, for one, album sales, because no one, well, not many people buy physical albums anymore. Mm. Um, singles don't exist anymore in, in physical form. And streaming royalties are, are hideously yes. low and stuff. Yes. So, yeah. And for a label to, this is kind of the catch-22 situation. Like nowadays, to get signed by a label, you have to work your fucking ass off. Like you have to work so fucking hard to get to, to get your, your, your band uh, to a big enough point for a label to notice and say, we can make money out of them. We'll sign them. Cause that's what it's all about. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all about making money. So, but then they, they sign you and all of a sudden you still have to do all that work yourself. You still have to work just as hard. The only difference is there's a label that's taken a huge chunk out of your business. Yeah, of uh, course. And there may be certain perks to it. You may get um, marketing out of it, or you may it may open doors to, to to getting a really good agent and stuff for shows. But when those things, in my my in my humble opinion, when those things are obtainable, albeit maybe harder to obtain, but still obtainable solely on your own and independently without having to sign to a label. I would always advise to just not go with a label. There's just no point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put, put the work in, and, and you can get there. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, nowadays, it's a lot more accessible, I suppose. I mean, if you go yeah. back 20, 20 years ago, it was a lot more difficult. But now, oh, with yeah. the streaming services, it's quite easy to get your music out there. That's it. Yeah, and it, I guess it's more so nowadays. Just about marketing it properly or yeah. knowing, knowing how to market it that's the tough one trying to kind of get it fit somewhere fit in somewhere well with the algorithms and stuff in order to be seen and, and knowing where to put your money if you've got a marketing spend and all that kind of stuff so it is hard it, it don't get me wrong it is difficult but it's possible it's possible to yeah, get yeah, yeah. Um, and it's worth it in my yeah. opinion yeah, yeah. Well, it has to be worth it, otherwise you wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> exactly. It's you know, it, you have it's to think worth, it's worth it, I mean. It's totally worth it for those slots you get for those mere 30 minutes on stage. That's what it's worth it for, man, just to be able to, everything just goes, all, all the shit you've got in your head just disappears for those 30 minutes while you're on stage and I'm the happiest dude alive when I'm on stage. Whether I sound good or not, I don't care, man. I'm just like, <laughs> on stage. I get to do my thing and, and and the rest of the boys as well. And we're, we're that's that's tr true happiness to me. That's yeah, true happiness, you know, and, and that's what makes it worth it. So you make your own music videos nowadays? Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess since teaming up with Rich, like from, from Dark Fable Media, um, that's kind of what I'm not... I guess over the last year or so, we've I've not been doing as much together because of just so much. I've I've been busy with the band, and we've also both equally been busy with the film and stuff. But we did, yeah. After kind of joining forces with him um, with the film stuff, wow, many years ago now. I guess thinking back to it, yeah, we sort of teamed up, and and he took me on, and we started shooting music videos together for other bands, my band oh. included. Um, so yeah, and I guess that's kind of like it is for him. That's you know that's his bread and butter. That's what he does. He shoots music videos and, and stuff for other bands, and he's ridiculously good at what he does. He's very good. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what we sort of went on to do that together for a period of time. And yeah, we shot most most of the videos for In Search of Sun. To be honest, moving forward after that, including the fire I play with, that was uh, shot by Rich. Um, I had a little go at times. I, I, there was a couple of shots that I did, but he's, you know, he's the yeah, guy that yeah. does it, man. He's, he's really good. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. cool. All right, then, mate. Well, that's, that's, been, that's been fascinating to talk to, you, to be honest. Mm. Oh, thanks, man. It's been really cool being on here and, and chatting with you guys. So, thank you. Yeah, just a thank you for having me on and uh, letting me chew both your ears off. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Yeah, I'm looking, no. I'm looking forward to seeing you live, man. And uh, like I said, I'm definitely going to download that movie tonight and have a watch because uh, it's been highly recommended by one of my buddies. So, um, yeah, I hope it does really, really well. Well, I don't know if he was the guy that posted on your... Because uh, you put podcasts, get in touch on your Facebook. And a guy called Lee Evans actually put... Oh, it was him. That's yeah, it. Yeah. So, oh, my God. So you guys know Lee. That was through, yeah. was through him. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, I don't yeah. know him, but David knows him, yeah. Yeah, I know him, yeah. I love that guy, man. I love he's, him. He's good as goal, isn't he? Yeah, he's he's brilliant. He's uh yeah, that's how he heard of us, man. Like we we got a, a couple of shows down in Wales and yeah, met him there and been been friends ever since. He's an oh, awesome dude and he's he's always yeah. He always uh, he's always got nothing but good words to say about about the band and stuff, and he's always sharing our stuff. So nothing but love for good old Lee Evans. Ah, oh, there you go. Cool. He'll be happy with that. Mm. Yeah. So was that was that at, was that at the Patriot then? Was it all the Dragonfly? It was the Patriot. Yeah. Okay. His born, <laughs> yes. Which was I don't know if I'm allowed to say uh, so I won't, but but I've I've got some <laughs> funny. Funny fucking stories related to the Patriot. Go on then, you can't um, fucking leave us in limbo. Oh man, I, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll say, I'll say the, um, I'll say the, the, the tone back version. But basically, the, the first time we <laughs> all went there, um, they kindly let us crash there for the night as well because obviously we're from London, so it's a hell of a long way away. So, um, but obviously they have their regulars in there that like to spend their time downstairs and have their drinks and stuff after the show and. And whatnot. Um, and Dave, the trilly guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, um, he gets like way too drunk, way too drunk. And he's going around and like challenging all these like these like big fucking biker dudes. Like, you know, you know, yeah. the, the type of guys that go there. Like, we did drug, like, I wouldn't want to mess with them any day at all. So like he's gonna have challenging them to arm wrestles, bless him. He thinks <laughs> <laughs> and like the, he's so harmless obviously he did, didn't mean to annoy anyone but because he was so persistent and he didn't realize it one of them like i, I could have sworn like the biggest guy in the room comes up to me and he leans down because <laughs> he's obviously twice my size and whispers in my ear if you don't get your mate to shut up, I'm going to fucking kick off. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry. Sir. <laughs> David, it was just a funny night. Just, just, just annoying, annoying all the locals and whatever. But yeah, it's a good, really good venue to play. And uh, yeah, really good people. Well, so. they just rebuilt it. So you need to get back yeah. at them. Huh? Yeah. yeah I've, I've seen, I've been seeing the updates and yeah, I'd love to get back there and play it at some point. So yeah. I'm sure that can happen down the line. Cool. Cool. All right, then, mate. Like I said, it's been a pleasure to speak to you. Very interesting. Yeah. I'm glad you like my movie idea because my girlfriend thinks it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. She might be more impressed with you. Get, yeah, get Jodie Foster on there. <laughs> get Adam to uh, produce it and direct it. And I think you're, you're onto a winner there, Ted. Yeah, I'll start. I'll just do a Quentin Tarantino spot and I'll sit in the corner somewhere. Yeah, cool, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be a little freaky creature if you want. No problem. <laughs> well, you're bigger than me, so you... <laughs> what are you going to call it? Oh, it was the postcode, wasn't it? it yeah, because over yeah. here... Well, I'm in Holland. I don't know if you know I'm in Holland or not, but I mean, no. I, I live in Holland. Obviously, I'm from South Wales, but I live in Holland. And the postcodes are only like four digits and two letters. Right. So okay. it's like um, 5667HS or something like that, you know? It's not like NP... Blah, blah, blah. So it's just like four digits and two letters. So that would have been the postcode. So you wouldn't want to call it Drain Invader. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, I'm sure there's a fucking disinfectant already called that. Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> we might get sued for plagiarism. Yeah, we'll yeah. stick with the postcode then. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh -oh. then, mate, yeah, let me know when you've got some more stuff coming out. We'll get you back on. Oh, I would love to. And again, thanks for having me, guys. And um, yeah, keep in touch. Yeah, cool. yeah, definitely. Yeah, I will now. Now you're my mate on Facebook. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cheers, Adam. Thanks, Big man. Stuff. Cheers, Adam. Adam. Thanks, buddy. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Cheers. Bye. Bye.
Thank you. 